From Nashville's WSM Radio, the original home of the Grand Ole Opry, this is a Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. Hey, it's Charlie Matos, and in this episode, we sit down with a guy who's in the Country Music Hall of Fame. He's a longtime member of the Grand Ole Opry, and maybe just one of the best storytellers on the planet. Marty Stewart joined us in studio to preview the 20th edition of the Late Night Jam, one of the great events of CMA Music Fest Week, and it started when it was still fanfare. And boy, Marty's got some stories to tell. Enjoy our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast with Grand Ole Opry star Marty Stewart. Please welcome the proprietor of the spiritual home of country music, <laughs> Philadelphia, Mississippi, and the Congress of Country Music's Marty Stewart. Dr. Cody, <laughs> greetings <laughs> and salutations. <laughs> hey, do you know Hardy? He's from Philadelphia. Absolutely. Okay, I figured your paths must have crossed somewhere. You know, because when we were his doing... arms were laden down at the ACMs the other night, as you know by oh, now. I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of him. You know, when we were doing that RFD TV show, his sister mm-hmm. was uh, working at the front desk, and she was trying to get it going, and I think Michael was just kind of in the background. And all of a sudden, Michael stood up and went, all right, y'all watch this. <laughs> 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 he is a good songwriter and a good man. I love everything he's got going. So proud you've, of him. you've got uh, the Marty Party going again Wednesday before we kick off CMA Festival. It's the unofficial right. kickoff event, if you will. Twentieth twentieth anniversary. <gasps> How about that? How about- who who was on the first show? You recall? I do not remember. I do not remember. I I don't. I don't. I think Jerry Lee Lewis is still down there playing from the night that you invited <laughs> no. him to come be a part. No, I tell uh. you. He was about to walk on stage, and I called him Uncle Gerald. I said, Unc? He said, what do you want me to do? I said, whatever you want to do. You can go do two minutes or two hours. He said, I'll see you in seven minutes. <laughs> and he gave me seven minutes. <laughs> Marty's party, the late night jam as we know it at the Ryman, is set for Wednesday, June 7th. Joe Walsh. Yeah. John Oates. Yeah. Del McCurry. Tell me about it. Oh, Come on. You ever listen to his Sirius XM satellite radio show? I love it. Handpicked. I love it. His memory is absolutely phenomenal, remarkable. I mean, he could take you back 50 years and you are there. It's as if you attended those shows that he The thing I love on. about Del is, is he's still a fan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he grew up like me and you with stars in his eyes looking at all those guys and loving their music so much. And he's really like one of the last correspondents from that world. You know, I love it. He said uh, Monroe was recording one day and the word rendezvous was in the lyrics. Uh oh. And said, Bill said, uh, Dale. He called him Dale, not Dell. Dale. He said, uh, What's that word right there? And he said, That's rendezvous. It's French. It's not pronounced the way it's spelled. So it was just awkward pause and big mon says uh, you want to sing this one <laughs> <laughs> that's golden sierra farrell yes mississippians chapel heart coming on strong aren't they and then connie smith constance yes Hello. the quill please constance yes <laughs> gary mule deer jake worthington and the Opry Square Dancers, first guy I talked to this morning was Pokey Chun. He called. Well, your day was off to a good start. <laughs> the Opry Square Dancers. He said, when you get paid to dance on the radio, when you stop and think about it, that's the best show business gig there is. And he is the best looking dancer on radio, don't you think? <laughs> Pokey. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't even thought about that, but that's pretty funny. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Well, I, I, you know, it's interesting. You were just talking about how Dale is still a huge fan. You are too, and you have such a great memory of all the things. When you come in here and you start telling stories, I mean, we could let that roll for four or five hours. Is part of that the reason why you've always been a collector? Because for me, if I see something, like if I see something that, you know, you wore, I'm like, oh, I remember when. Mm-hmm. Is that why you've always kind of hung on to things and become such a collector? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like hanging on to your grandpa's pocket knife or something. Right. It's a piece of a world or, or part of a world that I wanted to be a part of. started when I was a kid. You know, when Bill Monroe gave me his mandolin pick when I was 12 years old, it was like having gold in my pocket or like you know something really special i took it to school with me and i it it gave me something to hang on to mm. that was a part of this world up here i just treasured it 
Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. Well, Shipshawana, Indiana, that's coming up on June the 2nd. And then Nashville, Indiana, Brown County Music Center. Before you come back home on that Wednesday we referenced for the late night jam, Marty Stewart in studio with us this morning. And new music, Altitude, is coming out. The full album. We've had a couple of singles in advance of the full release on Friday of this week. Yeah. So give us what what are we in store for well the altitude was uh the last record was called way out west and we just kept going I just kept going and i think a lot of this record was inspired we we were doing shows with chris hillman and roger mcguinn the birds stuff and then we did a bunch of shows with steve miller band and we did a bunch of shows with chris stapleton and what all of those shows had in common was just these gargantuan songs mm-hmm. songs 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 but I think it was that Birds tour. It really touched my heart because everybody loved to see that. And it was just, it was a thing. Mm-hmm. And it followed me home and I kept writing songs. And Altitude, we had ready to go before the pandemic oh. brought us down. And we had to make a decision. Do we do this now and sit on it? Or do we wait till this pandemic they're calling is finally over and we potentially lose what we've figured figured out? Mm-hmm. So we put on our mask and stood six feet apart and, you know, just drudged through it and got it done. So we've been sitting on this record for a couple of years, but all the songs, every song on this record is is friendly on the road and people seem to like it, feel like old friends right off the bat. Well, you worked Lester Flatt into Country Star. See there? <laughs> which was on the 23rd of November, 2022, Bill Cody's Pick of the Week. That's right. From Marty Stewart and the Fabulous wow. Superlatives was Country Star. Thank you. Yeah, man, right Thank out of the you. box. As soon as I heard it, I said, that's this week's pick. Oh, that's <laughs> Made so my nice. job easy that week. <laughs> that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> Let's play it right now. You want to, Eric? You're on Coffee Country and Cody with Marty Stewart. WSM Radio all over the world. Circle Television Worldwide. Over the air streaming platforms. Find out how to watch at CircleAllAccess.com. Marty and the Superlatives now is Country Star. Well, on the radio side, you heard Del McCurry, who's going to be a part of the Late Night Jam, doing Misty, Too Much in Love, 100% bluegrass, by the way. (laughs) And then uh, we heard Country Star from Marty Stewart and the Fabulous Superlatives, uh, that single in advance of the album, Altitude, which comes out on Friday. Back in November, I made that a pick of the week, and and I found in your archive, November of last year, Marty Stewart, 30 years Opry member, 50 years in Nashville. Whoa. And there's somebody that's hearing this story about you getting off the bus and whoever was to, to meet you, to pick you up, was not there. And that's how the Marty Stewart story began, right? Right. Roland White. I was up, I came to, he was in Lester Flats band. So I had met Roland out on the circuit, and he invited me to Nashville. And I begged my mom and dad after getting kicked out of school just for the weekend, Labor Day weekend. And so the old Greyhound station, if you remember, was across from the Ryman sort at that time, or mm-hmm. Caddy Corner from the Ryman. Yeah. And Roland was supposed to be there at 2 in the morning. No Roland. And I thought, oh, maybe I'm at the wrong place. And so I went to the other side, and there was the Ryman. And I'd never seen it before. It was just such a big part, and I almost cried. And it looked awful, and it was tired, and it was weary, but I wanted to be behind those doors so bad. And Roland had got lost in a jam session, but it gave me a minute to just walk around and look. And a couple of weeks later, I was behind that those doors playing, and I that's where I've been ever since. How old were you? Home. 13. Wow. I have a 13-year-old. I can't imagine just letting her get on a bus and go. <laughs> and at that, that time in Nashville, well, it's kind of the same way now, but at that time, you needed two tetanus shots to get off the bus. <laughs> <laughs> just to get off the bus it was it was funky didn't remember it had demons den oh, that's all the first those one. triple x theaters line oh, balls yeah. tootsies oh it was awful it was awful i remember you know acuff owned some of those buildings on lower broadway right and uh they had a bust in there for some behavior 
that uh, was against the law. <laughs> Unbecoming. <laughs> and, uh, of course, they had Mr. Acuff was standing there on the evening news with the cameras live. And I uh, hear I had no idea uh, what was going on no, in there. No, no, <laughs> of course not. You know, they, remember those old country music films when they used to, they were kind of advertisements. They, they would show off the city so that the camera crew would go to the Ernest Tubb record shop and there'd be Ernest. We want to welcome you all to Quinn every time you come to Nashville. And uh, they went across to Roy Acuff's place, and then they went out to Webb Pierce's house where the pool was. Yeah. And T. Tommy Couture, the great oh. Opry, he was the best. Yes. He's like you. You could just throw him in a room and say, take it, Cody. Or take it. <laughs> and T. Tommy could roll. And you could tell they were talking about fishing or something right before the camera comes on. And as soon as the camera comes on, five, four, three, two, one, they're standing by the pool. T. Tommy starts with, beautiful pool web <laughs> <laughs> and they go from there but those old films that's what made me want to come to this town i want to be with those guys well you know web famously during what we know as fanfare now or other special occasions on the country music calendar in nashville would set up shop outside the house and yeah. sell merchandise to oh. the tours that would come by well, Ray Stevens and Ronnie Millsap, his neighbors, were like, Webb, stop it. Goes, no, listen, boys, bring me your stuff. I'll sell it for you. There's money to be made. Yeah, that's right. You know what? Speaking of money to be made, one of the one of the most profitable nights when I was in college, I was bartending. I wasn't bartending, but I was serving at County Line Rodeo. And their theme? Half an acre dancing and romancing. That's right. My biggest moneymaker maker. This man comes in and does a concert there, and I am the shot girl. I get to walk around with shots. Holy. And you were on stage, and I'm walking around, and everybody, it was just packed to the gills. And I remember going home with $350 cash in my pockets, and I'm like, man, I love Marty Stewart. <laughs> I'm a cheap date. <laughs> well, good for you. All right, Chris Stapleton in the life of Marty Stewart. Where do yeah. you guys first meet and get to know each other? Now you're out on tour. Christopher Stapleton uh, and I wrote songs together way back. And I thought, boy, this dude is going to do something. I don't know where it's going to start clicking, but one of these days. And then he surfaced with the steel drivers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came and did our TV show. And the next thing I know, here comes Tennessee Whiskey on the CMA Awards, and you know the rest. And so we're just old pals that and i'm so he's another one like hardy i'm just so proud of him i love it when the real deal gets through and and carries the flag for us and christopher is doing a fine job of that and chapel heart as it relates to mississippi how, how, how did you meet those girls like most of us i saw off the success of their their television uh reality stuff no i saw uh, their jolene song you can oh, have him okay. jolene on, on just it just popped up one day on on youtube and i'm like what is this and then I find out they're from Mississippi, and I, my first comment was, I hope this is really good. I hope they got it together, and I hope they're going to go the distance because unknowingly country music has been waiting for them because there's never been a Chapel Heart. Mm -hmm. That is cool. Mm -hmm. That is cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of them, too. And then uh, as it relates to Joe Walsh and John Oates, you got two Rock and Roll Hall of Famers that are This show, it. the Late Night Jam, they're all unique, but this one, it starts with – us and then there's the Grand Ole Opry Square Dancers and Dale McCurry and then it goes into Jake Worthington and Chapel Hart and then Connie and uh, it's it's like the Country Music and Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame first half of the show and then somebody hits a switch and it goes to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame it just evolves all night and I haven't seen Joe since 1973 when Lester Flat and the James Gang played a show together. I was getting ready to say you remember Funk 49 absolutely he's going to do that song with that show. intro is one of the greatest guitar licks as an intro that's right that I have ever heard so I am dying to hang out with Joe Walsh and and me and the Superlatives are big fans and same with Oates. Well, thanks for coming to see us this thanks morning, Marty. Thanks for letting Marty. me in. Marty Stewart, The Fabulous Superlatives. And again, it's the evening of Wednesday, June 7th this year for the 2023 edition of the CMA Music Festival. Joe Walsh, John Oates, Del McCurry, Sierra Farrell, Chapel Hart, Constance, Gary Mule Deer. He's Love the it. funniest cat on wheels. <laughs> what about he? him? Huh? <laughs> Jake Worthington, <laughs> the Opry Square dancers, and who knows? I mean, that, that list could grow between now and, will. The, and the 7th it of will. June. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for getting Thank up you, coming Mr. in Cody. this morning. You're on Coffee Country and Cody from WSM Radio and Circle Television all over the world.
Full album is out on Friday. Altitude. Here's Marty. Thanks for listening to the Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And please leave us a five-star review. This podcast was produced through the facilities of WSM Radio in Nashville, Tennessee. The hosts of Coffee, Country, and Cody are Bill Cody, Charlie Matos, and Kelly Sutton. Producer, Eric Markham. WSM General Manager and Director of Content and Programming, J. Patrick Tittle. Copyright 2023. Opry Entertainment Group Holdings, LLC.